Hey guys, it's Kato. So today I wanted to continue my digital audio basics series and go over another component of the handout that I made for some of my sound students. So today's component is going to be sample rate and how it affects your audio. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, guys, so here's my handout. You guys might be familiar with it if you saw my bit depth video, but basically today we're gonna go over how sample rate factors into this handout and into digital audio in general, and we're gonna kind of get a better understanding of sample rate. And so why is that important? Well, you know, people, if you've hung around with engineers or hung out in studios, a lot of times people will start talking about sample rate and what sample rate they work in and why, and there's, you know, varying schools of thought. You know, some people will say it doesn't make a enough of a difference so they don't work in higher sample rates. Some people love to work in the highest sample rate possible, right? So there's this whole discussion about it in the pro audio world. And so today I figured I'd help you guys get a better uh, foundational understanding of sample rate so you can be a part of that discussion. So it's good to understand the science behind it, right? So that's the basic idea behind today's video. So what is sample rate? So Basically, the way I describe it to my students is I use the frame rate in video as an analogy for sample rate. So if you're familiar with frame rate in film or even like the concept of a flip book, the way it works is there's a still image that's being played in series and when you play it fast enough, the human brain kind of blends those images together and makes a moving picture, right? So that's how it looks like it's a moving picture. It's, it's a bunch of stills being shot at you, you know, being shown to you in series, right? So basically a sample rate is very similar to that frame rate. So the frame rate is how often those stills are being flashed in front of your eyes. And sample rate is how often we're taking a sample of the audio, a sample of the analog audio, and then how fast we're recreating those samples and to, to create the audio digitally. So first of all, sample rate happens when we convert from analog to digital, right? So you have analog, which is variations in voltage, and that's analogous to the actual compressions and rarefactions in the air. So that's how we get the word analog, right? It comes from analogous. So we have the mechanical energy in the air that creates sound, and then we convert that into variations in voltage, which is the analog, and then we convert to digital, right? So when we convert to digital, what we're doing is we're looking at those variations in voltage and we're taking snapshots of data through time basically, right? So as we take those snapshots, we're storing different bits of data on those snapshots, and that's kind of how bit depth factors into it. So you should check out that video if you haven't already. But basically, we're taking these snapshots, and we can decide how frequently we make those snapshots, right? So if we have a high sample rate, we're gonna take those snapshots more frequently, whereas if we have a low sample rate, we're gonna take them less frequently, right? So you'll see on this chart here that the x-axis is time, and that stays constant between these two, right? So within the same period of time, a high sample rate will take more samples and a low sample rate will take less samples. So I hope that makes sense. So basically we're taking samples of the audio and we're storing them as, as pieces of data that we're going to then use to recreate the audio later. So now you might be wondering why should I use a higher sampling rate versus a lower sampling rate? And um, the reason why it kind of ties into how sample rate affects our sound, right? So basically the higher the sample rate, the better the frequency response for our audio. So whenever we record something, there's usually sound within a whole range of the frequency spectrum. And so when we capture that data and turn it into digital and then recreate it, if we have a higher sample rate, then what's gonna happen is those frequencies, that range of frequencies is going to be more accurately recreated with a higher sampling rate than a lower sampling rate. So one of the things that kind of ties into that concept is, and sample rate in general, is the Nyquist theorem. So we have the Nyquist theorem, which states that if we're going to accurately uh, recreate a certain frequency, we're gonna to have to sample its wavelength at least twice. So we know that wavelength ties into frequency. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I'll go over that at some point. But basically, just know that wavelength is tied in with frequency. If we have, and we can look at my chart here too, if we have a shorter wavelength, we have a higher frequency. If we have a longer wavelength, then we have a lower frequency, right? And so this is the wavelength here, this little lambda symbol is the wavelength. And um, basically with the Nyquist theorem, 
it says that you have to sample that twice, right? So if you look at these two wavelengths, so lower frequencies and higher frequencies, which one do you think is going to have a problem first? It's going to be the shorter wavelength, right? Because with a shorter wavelength, you have to have a more frequent sampling rate in order to accurately recreate that audio, right? Because you're gonna to have to sample it twice within that same wavelength. So, when we start looking at really low sample rates, what we notice is that the frequencies start to duck out, right? So you start to lose certain frequencies. And if you listen to an example or run a test with a really low sample rate, um, usually to, to understand, I'd recommend going below like what Pro Tools allows you to do. So Pro Tools, the minimum one is 44.1 kilohertz, but I recommend going below. And if you don't have a way to do that, there's videos on YouTube of people doing this experiment so you can actually hear. But basically, if you listen to a really low uh, recording with a really low sample rate, what happens is you hear certain frequencies start to, to drop. And the frequencies that start to be lost first are the higher frequencies. And you can actually hear that difference if you go low enough in the sample rate. But um, basically, the way the, one of the interesting things that I like to teach my students about the Nyquist theorem is that um, so if you have to sample each frequency twice, then that can kind of tell you how we get that 44.1 as one of the lower sample rates that we, we tend to use, right? So if you think about the range of human hearing, it's from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz-ish. Like it's not 100%. Some people can hear above that. Some people can hear below that uh, frequency range. But that's basically the, considered to be the range of human hearing, right? So if the upper range of human hearing is 20 kilohertz and the Nyquist theorem says you have to sample that twice to accurately recreate that frequency, then you're going to have to do at least a 40 kilohertz sampling rate, right? In order to accurately recreate the 20 kilohertz uh, upper range of human hearing. So that's my, um, I mean, it's not like my theory, but it's, it's, you know, that's how I understand 44.1 to be one of the lower ranges for the um, sample rate. So, and I'm not exactly sure why we get 44.1 kilohertz. If any of you guys know exactly what, how we got to 44.1, I would love to know if you can uh, let me know in the comments or something. I kind of just assume it's like, well, we have to have at least 40, and then if we really want to make sure that we get people that can hear a, a little bit above that range, maybe we round up a little bit. Um, but I'm not sure exactly how we got to 44.1 kilohertz exactly. But... Um, that's the Nyquist theorem. That's how it ties into sample rate. Um, it's really good to know. It's an important thing to know. So moving on. So, so with sample rate, the important things to know are that you know a higher sample rate means that we're taking samples more frequently. A uh, higher sample rate is going to have a more accurate frequency response, and um, the Nyquist theorem. And if you guys want to learn more about like nerdy audio stuff like this, um, I'll link to some of the textbooks that I've used throughout the years to learn some of this stuff, and um, in the description. And if you see any improvements that I can make to this handout, let me know, please, in the comments. I would love to know. I'm always looking to improve my, my content that I'm giving to my students. And the question of the day is, what sample rate do you guys work in and why? And please let me know in the comments below. I personally am working in 96 kilohertz right now in the studio. And part of that is because I did a while back, I did a blind, you know, blind, whatever, <laughs> a listening test in a studio environment, a really nicely tuned room, you know, really nice room. And um, we listened to the same track with different sample rates. And what I noticed was once we got up into the really high sample rates, it wasn't so much that I could consciously hear the difference, but I could, I could like feel the difference, you know, it was like cleaner, it was crisper, it just somehow felt a little bit better to me. And um, so now I'm doing 96 kilohertz instead of, I think I was doing 48k before. But anyway, let me know what you're working in and why in the comments below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, please share the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday. So I look forward to seeing you guys here and thanks for watching. Okay.